Hello, welcome back to the lab. Today I'm going to show off these nice Burroughs six-line self-scan displays that I got at the Hamfest. Well, I finally figured out how they worked and got it all hooked up here. So here's one of the displays. The driver board is underneath this NES top shell. Then this is that little interface board like before, the 250 volt power converter. Then my pick board. And so what I've done here is in this area here I have soldered 10 wires to where that connector goes. And that's eight data lines. There is a write signal and then a ready signal. So what you do, you put your ASCII code on the eight data lines, hit that write signal and wait for your acknowledge or your done signal to come back and that is it. With the lights off, you can actually see that scanning glow under the glass. That's what those lines are. If you look straight at the display, you can't really see those. They show up pretty good on the camera, but in real life they're not that bright. If I change the angle a little, you can kind of see it a little better, but then the camera shadow is in the way, so that's why I kind of moved it like I did. By putting a little lens in front of the camera, I can zoom it way, way, way in, and you can actually see the characters really close up now. Here's a close-up so you can see kind of from an angle what it looks like. And the scanning glow is clearly visible between every other scan line. Right in the corner there it says Burroughs Self-Scan 2 Display. And that's one of these single glass displays where all the glass is fused together and it's basically one piece. Well, that's a little overview of how it works. So let's try all of these displays and see if they all work. This first display was one of the loose ones here, and then this driver board needed some fixing up. It was set up for 12 line modes. I had to move this jumper and add a wire over here, and then it started working fine for the six line mode. And this was one of the bare boards that was laying around. This one actually didn't work, so I moved all these chips to one of the boards that didn't have chips, and guess what, it worked. This next one appears to be brand new. It was in the bag anyway. Looks like an original static bag so the display looks pretty clean the little label on here fell off just from age same control board so I'll just plug this in here plug in the high voltage connector here and then it should be ready to go And it is. Yep, yeah, looks like that works. And I figured out some of the other codes, so like an Alt 12 will clear the screen. Like that. An Alt 8 will backspace. An Alt 9 forward spaces. Alt 10 moves down. Alt 11 moves up. And then all the other Alt, Alt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 don't really seem to do a whole lot. But 8 does backspace, and then like I said, 12 clears. I wonder if 13 is like home or something. Yep, 13 is indeed home. Of that again. I don't know what 14 does. Oh, that's also home. Oh, that's interesting. 15 is like an insert. You see, it takes a little while to do that. The microprocessor stops and it moves all the data and then starts to scan up again. That's why there's one of those scan lines showed up fairly bright for a little while there. 16 removes. Okay, oh, yeah, that's interesting. If I just fill the screen all the way up. And then do some of those alt like 14s and 15s. 
Yep, does seem to be inserting a spacer. 16 takes it away and deletes whatever was on the right side of the thing there. 17. Oh, well, 7. I don't know what 17 did. Cursor goes away. Hmm. You got me. I don't know what that's doing. Nineteen. Oh, some kind of like cursor position saving. Twenty, twenty-one. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm, we kind of have broken it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's interesting. And then to turn the flashing characters on, you take the ASCII value and you add 128. So that upper bit is just basically like a flash bit. So actually I can just kind of hardwire that here. Whatever I type, whoops, whatever I type should show up flashing when I hardwire this bit. Yes, and it does. That looks like that works. Take that bit off, put it back where it belongs. Yep. And that is it. There's really not anything else. There's no lowercase. All lowercase is converted to uppercase. And it looks like there is room for another font ROM, so there could be upper and lowercase, but this doesn't have that other ROM, so it's just uppercase only. Okay, moving on. Let's try the third one. Here's the third one. Data, high voltage. See if this one works. Yep, yeah, it's not having space bar problems. But yes, indeed, this one appears to work just fine also. So that's three out of four. Well, I got another driver board. This one I actually tested, and it did have a problem. This chip is bad. So I cut this chip pin right here, which is one of the data lines from this bus driver, which is actually latching which character you want to write. Because of that, bit 8 is permanently stuck on, so when I type the text in, bit 8 is always going to be set. Other than that, once I replace this chip, this board will be fully functional also. And this is the fourth glass. I've actually tested this, and this one does have problems. You can see that burn in here. But this one does work, but it is kind of flaky, so I don't know if the tube itself is bad, or if this driver board's got issues. I was going to poke it with the scope and give it a look-see. Just place it upside down like that. NES shell goes on the top. And then the glass goes on. So I noticed when I bumped the 5 volts up a little, it started working a little better, but as you can see it's still fairly screwed up. And when I start typing, then it seems to recover a little, but if I type at, which is at a uh, hex 40, yeah, that's interesting. It shows up as an H, because H is 48 hex. You know, like that. So H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and then I get X instead. Two, three, four, five, six. 7890 minus equal sign, so it's all screwed up. But that's to be expected. But I don't know what's causing this, this problem here. If I adjust the voltage up and down, it 
seems to fix itself in various iterations. If the voltage is too low, the characters get all stretched out like that, which is kind of strange. So if I run at 4.4, which actually is about 5.1 on the board itself because these clip leads are, have, have kind of a major voltage drop, then it starts looking fine, and the glitching is gone too. Yeah, I'm at 5.1, 5, 5 4, 9, 4, 8, 4, 7, 4, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4. So I'm not 100% sure what's wrong with that, if that display is a glass problem or if it's actually a chip problem. I was going to do a little more work. I was going to swap this glass on one of the known working displays and see if that fixed it. If that does, and it's tells me it's on this board and that should be fairly easy to fix. I got more of those custom ceramic drivers if one of those is bad. Yeah, that really does not like the voltage being dropped. What's interesting is at 5 volts it's static but totally wrong and at 5.1 it's just kinda all wiggly and 5.2 and above it seems okay. Strange. So this is what a uh, typical message would look like on this display. Looks very late 70s, early 80s. Actually with that neon orange it looks pretty late 70s to me. It's kind of like something you'd find in Fallout 4. Speaking of Fallout 4, there is the first line from the Wikipedia article. I just cut and pasted it into Putty. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment. It really helps.